Hey, so I'm going to talk through here some of the usage of barcode scanning within deer inventory. Uh, this is something we get asked a fair amount about, especially when clients have been up and running for a few months. So once they've got the basics down pat, uh, they then start to look at how to make the system faster and easier to use. So I'm going to do all this within a demo system. Um, I'm also going to just note that this is subject to change. Uh, this is as of uh, July 2019, so mid-year 2019. Um, Deer are constantly updating the system, so there could be other areas that you can use barcode scanners, um, but I'm going to kind of highlight just a couple of them. Uh, another thing to note is that this is based on using a barcode scanner with just a general laptop, so I'm not going to show... Uh, anything like the scan SKU products, which are like an Android scanner or built in one. So I've got a Windows laptop here and I've just got a Motorola just retail barcode scanner. Um, these retail somewhere between about 100 and 150 Australian dollars. Um, they're used in a lot of retail stores. Um, they're pretty much USB plug and play. Um, something to note, which not a lot of people are aware of with barcode scanners is they are essentially just a language converter. So just like you can convert English to French or French to German, uh, they just convert the black and white lines of a barcode into text. So you don't need any specific technology or similar to, to make or to scan the barcodes. Uh, Deal will print barcodes or labels for you. Um, it's actually quite an easy thing to get up and running. Uh, if you want, handheld devices specifically for things like picking and packing that's a little bit more complicated and we'll address that separately um, a couple of just background things to note uh, if i go in here to inventory and then all products um, so products in dia have to have a SKU code uh, or a product code that has to be unique um, so you can't uh, duplicate it anywhere in the system so for example here beer cooler 001 um, if I click into here, it's also possible for products to have a barcode as well, and you can then scan either of these. So it could be that you refer to something as be a caller 001, your supplier that sends it to you has a particular barcode um, that they put against the product. You can use either of these at that point. Uh, if the supplier doesn't give you a barcode, I would say there's no need to fill one out here. You can just use the SKU code. Um, and in our case here, I'll just be using some fake print-offs, but that's what we're doing here. We've just got the barcode, which just matches the SKU code. So I'll now uh, show you one last thing in relation just to the scanner itself. Um, and then finally, I'll show you a couple of ways to use this within DIA. So the main thing to note, and this is going to vary by scanner, uh, but there's generally a book like this that will come with the scanner that includes um, some barcodes you can scan to change some settings. You'll see here there's a couple of important ones. You may not quite be able to see the text, but one of them is to add a enter line or return carriage um, after you scan. One is to add a tab. And I'll explain the difference to those in a moment. I've got mine set to enter at the moment. So uh, if we go in here to sale um, and then simple sale, the logic is actually very similar for an advanced sale for the sake of barcoding. Um, then you've got all the usual information that you need to fill out in DIA. So we'll just go and um, pop a random customer in for a moment. Um, and you'll see here that this scan tab shows up here. This shows whether or not you've got a scanner attached to the laptop. It will show up at all cases anyway. Um, if you click here, you'll see that it just says it's ready to scan. So if I now just go and grab a barcode there, GAC has been added, which is the one I scanned. Uh, I'll scan PAB next. Another product, uh, PAP, and again, and so on and so forth. Now you can also go to the inventory tab here and scan this way. There's no real difference in how it operates. If I scan here, you'll just see that the lines get entered in. Um, the only real advantage I've noticed for doing it this way 
is it gives you a chance just to check the codes. But at the end of the day, the end result is exactly the same. So now I've got these three lines in here. Um, one important thing to note is um, if I went back to the standard automatic here, so I've removed all those lines. And let's say I just scanned the same barcode several times and then a different one. Um, you'll see that the quantity still totals up correctly. So if you've got four boxes in front of you and scan all of them, then it will total up here. Now, in the sales side, people actually use scanning a lot less at the sales order stage. The reason being your customer is usually placing an order with you through some kind of order form or sending you a PDF or an email. You're not usually scanning barcodes at that point. It's normally when you pick the products that you want to scan the barcodes, make sure you've got everything correct. So um, this is four gold nail cases and payout six pack. I'll authorize this. I'll go to the pick tab. And this is normally where people would actually want to scan. The logic is exactly the same here. You've got the same three tabs. So let's say it's from Melbourne and I'll scan these in and I'm going to miss scan one product. So instead of having four cases and a pack, I'm going to have three and one. So three are the same and a different one. Close out of there and authorize. And you'll see this is the benefit that a lot of people get in using the scan to pack because the system is now telling you you've got less than the customer ordered. Now, there's no issue there. Um, you can select at this point you want to um, split fulfill this order or um, you can authorize if you just want to go past and say, no, we're just sending three of them. Uh, but you at least have this check to make sure that what you've scanned to put into the package or the box or whatever does match what the customer ordered. Um, at this point, I'm just going to say, I want to authorize that. That's what's happening. Uh, we ship the product out. Um, and in this case, we invoice the customer just for the three and the one that they wanted. So those are the two main usages of scanning on the sales side. Um, I'm not going to go into the purchase side. It's basically the same. Instead of having a sales order, you have a purchase order. Uh, but when you get to the order tab, you've got a scan option. Again, probably less used. And when you get to the receipt option, which is the purchase version of the pick option, um, that's where you would normally use it to confirm the supplier sent you what was on your order. A um, couple of other areas. Um, the next most obvious area is stock takes and stock adjustments. Um, also stock transfers. Again, these operate very, very similarly. So I'm purely going to show it on a, uh, I'll show you a transfer and a stock take. So here, let's say uh, that we want to stock transfer from one of our warehouses to the other one. Um, and again, I would scan at this point and scan a couple of products. So we've got thousands of these available. That's fine. We're sending one of each. Authorize this. Perfect. And complete. Oh, just missing one date in the system. And that will transfer them out through the system again a very, very good uh, entry check because you are physically scanning the boxes you are moving to the other warehouse. Uh, that's obviously the big advantage people look for in scanning. One is reduction in time for entry because if you've got big long product codes or similarities in products, uh, just makes it easier to just hit a button. The second is accuracy of data because what you're scanning is the box that you are sending, uh, whereas people can misread labels and things like that. Final one is stock adjustment and stock take. So here, um, I'm obviously not going to stock take 7,000 products, um, but I'll just show you the logic here. So we want to stock take in the Melbourne warehouse. We can obviously narrow down the categories and things like that, um, but I'll just start a stock take here for the moment. 
and you'll see all of our products here. Um, I've not selected to show the current quantity. That's something related to stock take training. We'll cover that in another video. Um, but here I've got my scan option, same three tabs. And at this point I can just continue um, scanning codes. Now you'll see at this point, this presents an interesting one. So here, when I've scanned the pale ale, you'll see here it says there's several products found. So I've got any, I've got a series of batch or serial numbers here. So because I've said I've scanned a pale ale keg, the system needs to know which one have you scanned. This brings up an interesting point. So if you're using batch or serial tracking, you want to make sure your labels have the batch number or the serial number on them, because then you can scan them as well. Um, in this case, I'll just hit on a line. That's perfectly fine. If I continue scanning them here, you'll see as I scan the same product, this stock take quantity here counts up. So even though I'm scanning the same product, I can see how far I've got. Continue scanning other lines. So now you'll see, scroll down here. So we've got one of these products one of these, six of these, and so on and so on and so forth. You can continue that in the normal fashion, and obviously hit complete when you're ready to finish the stock take. Probably the uh, last and only other use for the barcode scanner is, is actually more what this kind of scanner is used for in, in everyday business, which is the retail side of things. So uh, if you're using something like an iPad or uh, Android tablet, you would need to look at something that's Bluetooth based. Um, the latest iPad OS does support USB, but I would always say to look for Bluetooth scanners just for ease of use. Uh, but if you're using POS on a laptop like this, um, I'll just get logged into the point of sale. Um, and show you it's much the same logic here. I'm just gonna pause for a moment while I get logged in. Okay, so point of sale is logged in. I'm just gonna clear these couple of things from my last order. So obviously point of sale, we cover in a whole separate video. You've got uh, quick keys, sections, um, side options here to look up inventory, stock levels, do things like transfers and similar. Uh, but again, I'll use the scanner here and just scan products in. And this is where the enter option is important. So back to uh, these options here. Um, because when the product is scanned in, you'll see it's also pressed enter and it's placed one onto the docket. Scan another product, same again. Now, if I just uh, scan on here to reset it to the factory defaults, so how the scanner comes, you'll hear that noise that's gone back, and then scan a product, you'll see it will fill out PAP, but nothing happens. So a common question we get from clients is, I'm scanning the products in, but then I end up having to click the option or select something or similar. You may also see similar problems when you do stock taking and, and otherwise. So you want to make sure you use that option to get the barcode scanner to effectively press enter after each one, otherwise you're gonna to have to do it every single time. So again, I'll do that now. And it's just in the instruction manual. As soon as that's done, then I can just be scanning and everything goes straight onto the docket over here. Obviously then you just continue through your point of sale transaction in the usual way. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, that's pretty much all there is to know as a quick 101 for barcode scanning uh, within DIA. Um, if you want to see a more advanced video using the uh, scan SKU kind of handheld Android terminals for, for kind of full warehouse management, um, let us know in the comments and we'll add one of those in due course.